The show opens with Rachel walking into a show of the Flying Graysons. She sees the death of Grayson's parents which is so scary she wakes up from her nightmare. One day she comes home from school and sees a guy kill her mother who isn't actually her mother. This unleashes her powers which kills the guy and she runs away to Detroit because it's the only word she recognizes. Detroit is where Grayson works by day as a police officer and a psychopathic and violent Robin by night. At a shelter, Rachel meets Sally who claims she can help her but her inner demon tells her to run. <laughs> So she turns around because a police car is waiting for her around the corner to take her to meet Dick. When they see each other, Rachel says, You're the boy from the circus. Which should be immediate red flags, but he shrugs it off and thinks it's some kind of a joke and runs off so that Rachel can get transferred slash kidnapped again. Did I say run off? I mean a quick jog around the precinct so that he can watch the kidnapper drive off. Her powers accidentally get unleashed, which kills her captor, and Dick comes in to save her and they both drive away into the next episode. We also meet a woman who wakes up from a car crash next to a dead driver. She gets chased into the woods, but they give up after searching for 10 seconds so that she can figure out her name is Coriander's and that she's staying at a nearby hotel. She finds a guy in her closet and asks for information, then punches him across the room. She follows up by going to the club he mentioned into his office where they shoot her. This activates her powers and she turns everyone into barbecue. She leaves with a photo of Rachel. Oh, when we're also introduced to Beast Boy who turns into a green tiger to steal video games from Visions. Episode 2 starts with Dove coming in to save Hawk. For their three and a half year anniversary, Hank gives Don what any other man would, a key to his birdcage. Obviously, what were you thinking of? Don opens up a medicine cabinet to play us a montage of their previous years fighting alongside Robin. Dick drives all the way to Ohio to advertise, Sweet tooth. then drives all the way to a motel to advertise. That Game of Thrones? He then tells her that he won't leave her. You're gonna leave me too, aren't you? No. Then immediately proceeds with plans to leave her. You wanna leave her here? Rachel and Don shake hands, which triggers previous memories of her being with Dick. And Hank isn't happy to see him here either. The nuclear family sneaks up to the roof and defeat the team, taking Rachel and sending Don to the hospital. Episode 3 starts two days ago, when Corey managed to book a flight from Austria to Michigan without knowing her credit card pin. And the first thing she does is break into Rachel's house to steal a family photo. Corey finds Rachel off screen and follows the nuclear family, hoping that they wouldn't notice the same car following them the whole night. Good thing it works out for her because she turns the dad into barbecue and rescues Rachel by taking her to the church she was raised from. Detroit Detective Grayson walks right into an Ohio crime scene to download CCTV footage which he watches in the comfort of his own car in plain view of everyone else. Shortly after, Rachel and Corey go to scooters so that Rachel can meet Gar and Dick can meet Corey. Dick leaves with Corey because she remembers where her hideout is and they find out Rachel is part of a prophecy and the destroyer of worlds. The sisters take Rachel to be locked up in the basement, but obviously it doesn't work, and she breaks out and runs away to episode 4. The next episode opens in Congo, two years ago. People are evacuating a medical tent, and a guy shows up with a briefcase to save another guy, turning him green in the process. That other guy is Gar, and he finds Rachel in the forest and takes her into an episode of Doom Patrol. During the dinner, the chief asks the squad for help with a patient, but he also thinks he can help Rachel. But his plan goes terribly wrong and she attacks him. But Dick and Corey arrive on scene at this very moment to save the day and they leave with Gar so that the Doom Patrol can have their own show. Dick brings the team to a motel because it's easy to defend, since there's only one road in and out. He also thinks his team should know what his team can do, so they spend a whole day training at an abandoned warehouse that he scouted off screen. Later that night, Corey brings in some booze to get Dick to reveal his secrets and he immediately tests that theory. Evil scientists manage to brainwash someone to become the new father of the nuclear family, and they steal a car to track down the titans. Dick jumps in revealing himself as Robin and makes easy work of the nuclear family because this time he's wearing his costume. Dick rips out the GPS and follows it to meet Dr. Addison who killed the nuclear family and is now cooking breakfast for Dick. But before he can get anything out of him, Adamson's security team decide to stop playing hide and seek and instead play punch Robin with your guns, but another Robin comes in to save the day. In episode 6, they stuff Adamson into the back of a car and bring him to one of Bruce's hideouts. Jason explains he found Dick because of the tracker in his arm and that the melting man is melting his circus friends. Dick decides he needs to protect Clay from getting melted but Clay walks the wrong way and he gets kidnapped. The next day, Tony Zuko is arrested and Dick intercepts the transport truck to get his revenge because he's the guy that killed his parents, but the Moroni show up to finish the job for him. Then he gets a text on his Robin phone and meets up with the Melting Man, aka Nick Zuko. Jason sneaks in to say hi, Nick shoots his armor instead of his head, they beat him and leave with Clay, and Jason beats up some cops. In the next episode, Dick lets Rachel talk to Adamson, but he decides to test her powers by killing himself. Good thing it works out for him because she ends up healing him with powers she can't even control. They find out that Adamson works for an organization called The Organization who wants to reunite Rachel with her father. And Rachel's mother, Angela Azrath, is still alive. 
Rachel wants to save her, but Dick and the rest of the team thinks it's a trap and say no, then immediately do the exact opposite, but they find out Rachel had already left with Gar. Surprise! It's a trap and all the team members get taken out and tortured. Rachel meets Adamson again but goes demon mode and reverses the healing she did on him which kills him. She finds her mother, finds the rest of the team, and burn the place down. In this episode, Dick leaves the team to recruit Donna Troy. She leaves him in a gallery to shut down a poaching operation. Then they go to a bar so that she can look through his phone to decipher some writing and they find out that Corey's mission is to kill Rachel. The rest of the team decide to go to a house in Ohio and when they get there, Rachel tries to jog some memories for Corey but she's like no 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 and grabs her by the throat. Episode 9 gives us an origin story for Hank and Don because the writers forgot to write one in the second episode. Hank was sexually abused by his coach as a young boy, and in college he decides to dress up as Hawk and Dove with his brother to fight against other predators. One day, Hank bumps into Don on the streets and they start seeing each other. Another day, he tells her about his childhood, so she decides to get revenge for him. Good thing he still looks exactly the same as he did 20 years ago, so he was easy to track down, and he overpowers her, but Hank shows up to finish the job. In the present day, Don wakes up from the hospital bed telling Hank they need to find Jason Todd. Episode 10 is too soon for our heroes to die, so Donna breaks up the fight with her lasso. Cory leaves, but they follow her. The Trinity arrive at a warehouse and they enter Cory's invisible ship. Cory finds out she's from a planet called Tamaron, and a conveniently placed book explains the rest. Trigon is from another dimension who had a daughter, Rachel, and she's the portal between both worlds. Donna points that Angela may also be involved. Gar keeps getting visions after killing a guy from episode 7, and later that night, Angela poisons him and tricks Rachel into bringing Trigon into this realm to save him. On the way back, the trio notice that the house is surrounded by a dark sphere, so Dick decides he needs to run into it so fast that he runs 5 years into the next episode. In the future, Dick has a family with Dawn and everybody lives happily ever after except for Batman who turns evil. Dick steps on him and his eyes turn black because that means he's evil now. A post credits scene in Academus Lab shows some guy break out of a glass tube and saves a dog with glowing red eyes. 